the Powerful Content Podcast, your go-to source for content creation, strategy, and business inspiration. I'm your host, Mel Daniels, content strategist, coach, and speaker, empowering women across the globe to grow their business with powerful content that connects, nurtures, and converts. So if you're ready to create standout content that gets you noticed and remembered or build an aligned audience who love you and are ready to buy from you, you're in the right place. I believe that content has the power to connect us all. It's up to you how you use it. Listen in for genuine and insightful chats with guests, as well as practical tools and strategies from me. It's so lovely to have you here. Let's dive into the show. Hello, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to episode 70 of the Powerful Content Podcast. As you can probably hear from my voice, I am a little bit under the weather this week. I definitely will not be batching any of my episodes today, which you don't need to do, by the way. And if you want to know more about batching and whether you should batch your content, then go back to episode 16. Anyway, hopefully this will be the only episode that I sound like this. So today's episode is all about the concept of content marketing and things that are commonly thrown around in that online space for service-based businesses as things that they must do and which I don't believe that you have to do. There's quite a few of them, so grab a cuppa and strap in or take your dog for a walk. So the first thing is creating a content strategy is a set and forget thing. Now, just like everything else in business, content marketing is absolutely 100% an ongoing process. You are forever changing and always growing, and so should your strategy. As you refine your thought leadership, you may need to go back and look at who your ideal client is. As your beliefs and services change, you may need to revisit your message So there's lots of different elements that can change over time. So it's really important to always go back to your strategy at least once a year to check in what's changed so that you can adjust it accordingly and make some changes yourself. The second thing is you need to create a lot of content to be successful. Mm -hmm. Whilst it's important to create that high quality content On a regular basis, you don't need to be on the content creation hamster wheel in order to create the impact that you desire. The old adage of quality over quantity couldn't be more important here because when we focus on the purpose of our content, rather than just adding to the noise out there, our content is more likely to hit the mark and will end up creating less of it anyway. So the next thing I don't believe is that you need to be the most qualified expert in the world before you can create or teach. So this is probably more something we tell ourselves. Tara Moore in her book, Playing Big, which I love by the way, names one of her six hiding strategies as I need the degree. So that means you need one more notch on your belt before you feel confident you can talk about something or a topic. You need the perfect five-point framework before launching your service. You have to download all the shiny things or buy all the courses that you never finish, all while justifying that once you know this topic, once you become the expert and you have that qualification, then you can talk about it. But I want you to know that you are enough just exactly as you are right now. You only need to be a few steps ahead of someone to teach them something or show them how to be, to do, or to have different things in their life. You don't need to be a master in something to be seen as the expert. The next thing that a lot of us assume is that you need to spend a lot of money on content marketing and on content marketing tools to be successful. And I'm here to say that free is just as good as paid, especially when you're starting out. I don't necessarily subscribe to the idea that you need to start out as you wish to carry on, you know, meaning that you need to invest the big bucks up front in the big tools that do all the things in anticipation of using them one day. I used the free plan of MailChimp for over six years in my business. 
I still use Meta Business Suite to schedule my content on Facebook and Instagram. And I used the free version of Canva for a few years, along with their free stock images. Yes, it's not 100% ideal, but it definitely did the job. I thoroughly believe that you can reach your ideal client and grow your business without all the bells and whistles to start off with. And it still amazes me that we have what's essentially free platforms we can use being social media, understanding how best to utilize the features of these. And I'll talk about algorithms in a moment, but understanding those features can really help you grow your business. The next thing I think a lot of people believe is that you need to utilize trends in order to skyrocket your followers. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of problems with using trends and it may actually do more harm than good when it comes to content marketing. Firstly, it may not fit with your niche. Whatever the trend is may get lost on your ideal client or simply may not be appropriate. And one of the members of the Content Effect shared a great example of this recently, and it was a post by Vic Emergency, which is a state government department for one of the states of Australia for emergency preparedness. They jumped on the trend of how difficult it was to get Taylor Swift tickets. They used Taylor Swift song titles in their copy, and the graphic had a phone with a map on it and a calendar reminder at the top saying, prepare for Taylor Swift tickets which I totally missed whilst I was looking at the post on my phone. So for many people, including myself, and I've been listening to a lot of Tay Tay recently, having a Swifty in my life, the relevance was totally lost and received a lot of questions and comments and a lot of backlash as well. So just because something's trending doesn't mean your ideal client will get the reference. The other thing I have to say about trends is that and man, this really gets me cranky, (laughs) is that people who are supposedly experts at getting more followers are actually the ones who are teaching Instagram or social media. It's their niche. And of course, people are going to follow you if you continue to share the latest trending audio. Kind of ironic, really. And lastly, trends can tend to attract the wrong kind of people to your audience. And whilst quantity is always nice and great for our ego, It's quality that will always sell in the end. So I guess what I'm saying here is that trends can help your business and you can definitely use them to your advantage, but they aren't necessarily the way to go with your content marketing. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is a biggie, and that is how to beat the algorithm, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or some other social media platform. The time that you invest in trying to beat any algorithm would be so much better spent in creating quality content. It's that simple. Algorithms aren't there to be dissected and beaten. They're actually there to show people the most relevant content to them. So if you're creating relevant content for your ideal client, you can bet that they're more likely to see it. So please save your energy and save your brain space for other things and algorithms when it comes to content marketing and focus on providing amazing content that your ideal client wants to consume. Now that next one makes me get a little bit cranky as well. And this is that you must follow this one strategy in order to be successful. Oh man, the number of times that I see this hook appear on my social media feed makes me want to cry. There is no one magic ingredient. There is no one size fits all strategy that's going to earn you a million dollars in less than a month. By all means, take elements of these touted strategies that fit with your time, energy and resources, but don't feel like you must follow everything to the T in order to be successful. And then, you know, you'll feel bad when you try to follow every step and you don't achieve the overstated results that were touted. And the reason is that you are an individual. So is your business and so is your ideal client. Only you know what's best for everyone. The next thing that I think is not necessarily true is that content marketing takes a lot of time and energy. So yes and no. Setting up your strategy and plan can take a bit of time and energy, 
but you'll save a lot of time and energy in the future by knowing exactly what you're going to say, how this fits into your planned promotions, how it leads your ideal client on a journey and how your content will flow as a result of all of this. So on top of this, using the power of reimagination and you'll save yourself even more time. And if you want to know more about the power of reimagination, go back to episode 10 to learn more. And when we add into this learning how to use AI with strategy and purpose, then this is going to save you a bucket load of time as well. And on top of this, you also can save time by collaborating with others. I know that every fortnight I don't have to come up with content for this podcast as I have a guest. Similarly, if I guest on someone else's podcast, then I know that's content for me to be able to share with my audience that I don't actually have to come up with. And if you ever want to check out some of the podcasts I've been on, head on over to my Instagram highlights to discover some fabulous businesswomen that I love and who have hosted me on their podcast. Okay, so I know that feels like a lot of negativity. So I don't want you to walk away from this podcast today thinking that I'm a bit of a negative Nelly today with a head cold. So here's what I do want you to focus on when it comes to your content marketing. I want you to remember that it's a journey. It's a journey for both you and your ideal client. So content is the way, the only way that your ideal client goes on a journey from not knowing anything about you all the way to becoming a paying raving fan. And I probably say this on almost every single episode, but it's quite simply true. Think about how your clients become your clients. Did they magically pick your email address out of the air and contact you? Unlikely. They've probably downloaded your free resource, followed you on socials, been reading your emails, reading your blog or listening to your podcast, watching your videos. They've consumed you, your thoughts, your approach to what you do. And at the very minimum, they've Googled what they're looking for and found your website, had a look around and decided to contact you. All of this is content and all of this is taking them on a journey. So when we use content with purpose and power, that's where the difference kicks in. And not only is content marketing about taking your ideal client on a journey, it's also about your journey as you test and tweak, talk about what you do and who you are as you evolve, as your office change and you increase your confidence. And as you get to know your ideal client on a whole new level, no one gets it right first go. And certainly no one ever stops working on their content marketing as the platforms we play on and technology like AI evolves, it's all a work in progress. So that's the first thing that I want you to remember, that it's a journey. Second of all, I want you to remember that it can be fun. Well, at least enjoyable to create content. When you learn to really lean into who you are and you know your strengths, anything is possible. That's why I'll never tell you that you should be doing content marketing a certain way. I'll definitely share with you things that I do that work, but I'm a planner archetype at heart. And I know that the things that I'm good at won't necessarily feel right for someone else. Similarly, as a planner, I'm also very aware of my weaknesses and try and lean into embracing more of the free spirit archetype to create that more in the moment type content. It's definitely a work in progress for me. So this is only possible if I know my archetype and understand my strengths and weaknesses. And by the way, if you're curious to know your archetype and you haven't done my quiz yet, head on down to the show notes for the link. You can do the quick quiz in under four minutes and you'll find out your archetype and what works best for you and what you need to look out for. So once you understand what really works for you in your content marketing, then I can guarantee that it's going to be a whole heap more enjoyable. Okay, well, that's it. I hope that today's episode has given you the permission to let go of all the shoulds, because when we're aware of and embrace the unique human being that we are, then anything is possible with our content marketing. Talk soon. 
Thanks so much for listening. That's it for another week. To get more powerful content in your life, make sure you're following along on socials. My handle is at Meld Business. And just in case you're wondering, the groovy music for this podcast was created by Just Here on SoundCloud. I'd also be super grateful if you took a moment to rate and review this podcast so more amazing women like you can experience the power of content. And if you're like, hell Mel, stop talking. I'm ready to work with you now. Here's how we can work some powerful content magic together. Firstly, come and join the content effect. My membership, Inspiring Women with Service-Based Businesses to ditch the content chaos and start creating standout content that gets you noticed and makes sales. You can join us by using the link in the show notes or just Google the content effect. The second way we can work together is via my one-on-one packages. We can create a sustainable content strategy or start to build out your client journey. It's up to you. Pop on over to meldbusinessservices.com.au forward slash services to find out more. Until next time, have a beautiful week and embrace the power of your content.